If you're considering using therapeutic nutritional ketosis or a ketogenic diet to treat serious mental illness, you want to do it with your physician and not by yourself. And today we're going to show you how. Welcome back to Metabolic Mind, where we're working to revolutionize the treatment of mental illness by providing information and resources at the intersection of metabolic health and mental health. I'm Dr. Brett Scher. Metabolic Mind is a nonprofit started by Roblox founder David Bazuki and his wife Jan after their son Matt sent his psychiatric symptoms into remission with a metabolic intervention called nutritional ketosis. Our goal is to help families like theirs learn about this new approach to treating mental disorders and to offer a message of hope. Freedom from the burden of mental illness is possible. Now we have a whole video explaining why it's important to work with your clinician and I encourage you to watch that video first. But what if your physician isn't knowledgeable about nutritional ketosis? What are you supposed to do then? How can you discuss this topic with them in a way that makes it likely that they'll help you and work with you to ensure you're starting nutritional ketosis safely and effectively. Well, in this video, I'll review the key concepts and share helpful resources to help you make that happen. I'm also going to explore the three most common concerns doctors may have and suggest ways you could address them, including the important topic of do keto diets increase cardiac risk. Then in our next video, we'll cover five other concerns that physicians may have, including what's the state of the evidence and, and how do you respond to that? But first a reminder, our channel is for informational purposes only. We're not providing individual or group medical or healthcare advice or establishing a provider patient relationship. Many of the interventions we discuss can have dramatic or potentially dangerous effects if done without proper supervision. Consult your healthcare provider before changing your lifestyle or medications. Therapeutic nutritional ketosis or simply starting a ketogenic diet is a powerful health and medical intervention that can change your body's metabolism and can dramatically alter brain function, medications levels, sleep patterns, energy levels, and other physiologic functions. You should not start a ketogenic diet alone or if you have a psychiatric diagnosis or symptoms or take psychiatric medications. And that's why if you haven't already, I encourage you to watch our previous video where I discuss why it's so essential to work with your clinician when starting a ketogenic diet or using therapeutic nutritional ketosis. And we talk about the top four concerns you need to be aware of. At the end of that video, I also discuss the most crucial point about talking to your doctor. I believe the most important point is emphasizing collaboration and teamwork. Remember, your doctors dedicated their work life to helping others. At their core, most doctors want to help. It isn't their fault that the system devalues prevention or lifestyle and nutrition or that it shoehorns them into a five or 10 minute office visit. I, I believe it, get, it helps to get past those external restraints to sort of tap into a physician's core desire to help. Now there are different ways to do this, but here's a potential script you could use just for reference, right? You could start off, hi, Dr. So-and-so. I've heard from different doctors online that I can use nutrition along with my medications to treat my and then you fill in whatever's appropriate for you, whether it's depression or bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or also OCD, PTSD, anxiety, and other mental health conditions. So you fill that in what's appropriate for you, then you say, I I'd like to try it as I'm eager to find anything that can help. But the doctors also mention concerns, especially when starting on a keto diet, and, and that I should work closely with my treating physician. So I want to ensure that we can work together as a team to ensure I do this safely. Now, I plan to continue my medications and hope to try this as a four-month experiment. Are you able to help me? I'm happy to share some of the resources from the other doctors I've been following if you think that would be helpful. All right, so again, you don't have to use this script, right? I just use this as something that I think could be a good starting point because it emphasizes teamwork and collaboration and, and sets us up as a timed experiment rather than a forever treatment. In addition, and this is important, it emphasizes that you're going to stay on your medications and that you're willing to share doctor vetted resources. Now, personally, I find tremendous value in lived experience and personal stories, but I think we have to acknowledge that most doctors are much more receptive to information from other doctors, especially those in psychiatry. So with that in mind, here's Harvard-trained psychiatrist and metabolic psychiatry pioneer, Dr. Georgia Ede, with her own advice on discussing therapeutic nutritional ketosis with doctors unfamiliar with the concept. A few pieces of advice. Um, I would certainly, of course, uh, be delighted to have them join one of one of my uh, training programs to to if, if they if they would like to learn all the ins and outs of working this way. But for people who can't do that or or don't have the time, I think that um, uh, it's really important to learn more. So you can learn more by reading papers. There, the the research in this area is exploding, and there there's a lot you can learn on your own uh, by by reading the scientific literature and. Uh, I would I would I would actually point people to 
um, to a recent uh, review paper written by Dr. Shabani Sethi and Dr. Judith Ford that lays out um, the scientific underpinnings of the ketogenic, the scientific rationale for using a ketogenic diet in psychiatric care. And they, they summarize a lot of the clinical research as well, so you can see kind of where the science stands as of 2022. Um, I would also encourage them to read the paper that I that I wrote with with Dr. Danan and Dr. Westman, Dr. Sasso this year, that that sort of explains, uh, sort of shows clinicians what is possible even with people who have uh, serious chronic mental illness and who are taking multiple medications, following just a very simple ketogenic diet, uh, a copy of which is included in the paper in in the um, in the in the supplement. Uh, and, it's, and it's an open access paper, uh, you can see exactly what the diet was that was used. And, and you can read about some of the precautions that, that needed to be taken and, 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 uh, and, and sort of, I, I hope, feel encouraged and uh, emboldened by, by uh, Dr. Danan's work. And so I think my main, my main piece of advice would be to learn more and and to listen listen to your patients and try to understand why it is that they want to do this and and how it is that you might be able to help them and and I would also encourage people uh, to try to work as a team with other clinicians when it, if at all possible if you're a clinician who's new to this work um, you know this work does take more time it requires more education, it requires more support, more monitoring, especially in the beginning. And I know a lot of physicians are very, very busy. And some may think, oh, you know, I don't have the time to take someone who has been, they may not have been doing very well, but at least they were stable on, on their medication regimen. Do I really want to kind of throw everything up in the air and destabilize somebody uh, potentially uh, to, to, do, to, to uh, try a new intervention that I don't have a lot of experience with. So I would encourage people to reach out to uh, dietitians, to coaches, to therapists uh, for support and so that you won't be the only one working with that patient so that you can all work together. And th- th- that's why one of the reasons why we're starting this directory, you're launching a directory so you can look for clinicians in your area or that you could work with remotely so that you can create a supportive clinical team. You don't have to do this by yourself. And I think the third thing I would say is it's much easier than it sounds. <laughs> and in, in so many cases, it's easier than prescribing medication because you're not having to worry. Once the, once the person's through the initial transition phase, you're not having to monitor uh, for all of these uh, you know, long-term side effects of medication. And in so many cases, people get so much better that eventually you often become obsolete <laughs> and you can then see another patient who needs your help. So I think there's a lot of good news there. <laughs> we'll link in the description below to the papers she referenced by Dr. Shivani Sethi and Judith Ford and the study she co-authored with Dr. Albert Danan and a, a PDF paper that she's created that could be really helpful to share with your clinician. But I love how she said, show them what's possible and how this can be easier in the long run than prescribing more medications. Because let's be honest, most doctors won't know what's possible from therapeutic ketosis because they, they haven't tried it before. And I love her emphasis on teamwork with dietitians and coaches and other professionals who can help. You can find many of them in her directory at our website at diagnosis.com. But talking to your doctor goes beyond just emphasizing teamwork and needing help with safety and emphasizing staying on your medications. Many clinicians will be skeptical about a ketogenic diet, thinking it could be dangerous. So I think it's important for you to understand their potential concerns ahead of time to prepare for how to answer them maybe and to know what resources you can provide. So let's hear a little bit more about this from Dr. Ignacio Coranta, a psychiatrist in Argentina, and and whether he encounters skeptical doctors in Argentina as I feel we do here in the U.S. Uh, In fact, uh, I do find some of the same uh, resistance and and arguments that I've been uh, seeing in the U.S. since I started going to conferences and, and the ketogenic diet uh, have regained some of the popularity. In fact, some of these uh, attacks to the ketogenic diet come from people who don't understand uh, the potential as a therapeutic intervention. And I, I try to come uh, when, when I have the opportunity to speak with other professionals, other psychiatrists, neurologists, cardiologists here in Argentina, and, and of course, internal, internal medicine doctors, I try to come from a place where I uh, propose and I 
convey the idea that this is a highly potent therapeutic tool and the, the, the aspect that has to do with uh, weight loss, which, which is one of the most sought after effects of the ketogenic diet in the, in the, in the community as a whole, uh, it's only the, the door or, or, the, or the, the, one of the, the main arguments why people come into the diet. But when they start seeing that it has multifaceted benefits and it can impact overall quality of life, both both uh, objective in, in their in their clinical measurements in their in their analysis in the clinical analysis, but also in in the subjective measures, which are uh, more often than not uh, disregarded in the medical community. People start feeling better. They not only lose weight, but they start. Uh, thinking clearly. All right, so here's what I see as the eight most common concerns from physicians that you may want to be aware of ahead of time. We'll cover the first three in this video, and then we'll switch to a second video to cover the next five, because eight's a lot to get through, right? But remember, these are potential concerns. They may not all come up. Maybe none of them will come up, but I think it's important for you to understand these yourself. So first, ketosis is a dangerous medical emergency. This is a common misunderstanding and really unfortunate because physicians aren't taught about nutritional ketosis. Instead, as physicians, we're taught about ketoacidosis, which is a severe, potentially life-threatening condition that can occur in people with type 1 diabetes or less commonly in people with conditions like alcoholism. But the key determining factor is either not enough insulin with very high blood sugar and ketone levels, almost always above five millimoles per liter, or severe malnutrition with the same factors as in alcoholism. So because that's what we're taught about ketosis, many physicians will equate being in nutritional ketosis, which is normal, natural, and perfectly healthy, with the dangerous medical condition of ketoacidosis. And it's important to emphasize that those are two completely different concepts. So we'll link to a resource in the description below that goes into much more detail about this, but such an important first one to understand. The second concern could be that a ketogenic diet is just a fad weight loss diet. So why would that help with mental illness? But this couldn't be further from the truth uh, because a ketogenic diet has been used as a medical intervention for over 100 years to treat seizures in children with epilepsy. Now it's also used for adults with epilepsy and has been studied in multiple randomized controlled trials and even has Cochrane reviews about the evidence. So, so while a keto diet is commonly portrayed as a fad weight loss diet, the, the reality is that doctors have used it as a medical intervention for over a century. So that's no fleeting fad. That's been around for a long time and has a proven track record. But here's the third and could be potentially the most concerning for many physicians is that a ketogenic diet could be dangerous, including increasing your cardiovascular risk or decreasing bone health or being a strain on your kidneys. Each of these topics is basically an entire video in itself. And I'll link to an educational guide from dietdoctor.com that addresses each of these. But the main takeaway is that there's no good evidence that nutritional ketosis is harmful to your bones or kidneys. And some studies suggest the exact opposite. And the same is true for cardiovascular risk. So the main concern would be an elevation in LDL or ApoB. You can think of ApoB as basically an even better measure of LDL. But here's what's so interesting. Many doctors just flat out assume that a ketogenic diet will automatically raise LDL. But that's not what most of the studies show. Instead, most scientific studies using the keto diet for weight loss or to treat type 2 diabetes show no rise in LDL. Or if the LDL does go up, it's just a minor change. One example I love to point to, which we'll link to below, is a study from Verda Health, which showed a 10% increase in LDL, but an overall 12% reduction in calculated cardiovascular risk. That's right, the overall cardiac risk went down despite a slight 10% increase in LDL. So a lot of people would say, well, how could that possibly happen, right? Well, the decreased cardiac risk comes from the benefits of improving metabolic health and blood sugar and insulin, decreasing triglycerides, decreasing small dense LDLs and VLDLs, and other metabolic improvements. I did a whole video on this topic um, at Diet Doctor, which we'll also link to below. So you'll have plenty of resources to explore for further, further knowledge. But here's another key though. We need to recognize that there is a population of people in whom LDL increases dramatically on the ketogenic diet, these so-called low carb LDL hyper responders. And at this point, we simply don't have enough evidence if this is very dangerous or completely benign or somewhere in between, or if it should be treated differently. But people will profess to know that it is one or the other. And I would say we simply don't know because it hasn't been studied specifically in this situation. So until we have conclusive evidence, I and many other clinicians suggest not ignoring any rise in ApoB. 
But then the question is, what do you do about it? Well, instead, I, I think you just have to work with your doctor on a comprehensive cardiovascular risk assessment, which includes the beneficial changes in your metabolic health and quality of life that may have occurred along with the rise in LDL or ApoB. All right, so that's, that's a lot of information. Let's pause for a second. We covered suggestions on how to talk to your doctor about starting a keto diet, the importance of collaborating with your doctor as part of your team and staying on your medications, and how you can help your doctor find helpful resources, many of which we link to in this video. We also covered the top three reasons doctors may be skeptical of nutritional ketosis. Now in our next video, we'll cover five more concerns your doctors may have, including suggestions on how to respond to someone who says there isn't enough evidence for using nutritional ketosis for mental illness. So please watch that video if you want more information on this important topic. Now, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up and subscribe buttons and make sure to share this video with your family and friends and healthcare provider so you can help spread our message to help as many people as possible. And also please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you, hear what you found most helpful and to be able to interact with you. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a great day. Please take care of yourself, take care of others, and we'll see you here next time in Metabolic Mind.